happy vlogmas it is thursday the 8th and i am very excited today i'm very tired but i'm also very excited for three reasons reason one it snowed reason two i went to the vegan bakery that i keep trying to go to and then just never managed to make it there but i made it there today and reason three <laughs> I started a new book today. All excellent things. So it started snowing last night. We have had weather warnings here in Aberdeen for the last couple of days about snow and ice and I didn't dare to dream that it would snow except that I did dare to dream that it would snow and it started snowing yesterday while I was working and <laughs> I was very helpful in announcing to the team that it was snowing uh, but it was so wet because it had been raining for the last couple of days that the snow just turned to slush but last night it actually settled and so I woke up this morning to like a not a full-blown winter wonderland but definitely enough snow to leave footprints. It was great. I was very excited about that at seven this morning when I'm trotting off to the office. So it sort of made me feel a little bit more festive to have snow because snow just makes me feel Christmassy. I also managed to get myself to the vegan bakery. I'm not vegan but I can't eat cow's milk so I wanted to go there and get some delicious baked items that would not make me ill. And I have been meaning to go there since it opened. I don't even remember when it opened. Months and months and months ago. But just the opening times. I start work before they open and I usually finish after they've closed. So when I'm in the office I just never have had the chance to get there even though it's super close. But I made time for it today because we had a power cut at work. So I took an extra long lunch break and I managed to get there and get myself a gorgeous little, uh, it was like a vanilla Danish with custard inside. And I had that when I got home after coming home in the snow. So it was a just very, very well-earned delight. And I'm so excited I actually managed to get somewhere that I have been planning to go for months. So a very good day for me. I started The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber, which is my elf prompt for a book with a map, because this book has a map right here. And not only does it have a map, but it's signed and it has the most gorgeous cover. Like, obviously, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. But underneath the jacket, there is a secret even more gorgeous cover which I will show you. Isn't that just absolutely stunning? I take the dust jacket off of hardback books when I read them just because I don't want to uh, tear them and I don't know if that is the point that I would harm the dust jacket rather than the book but I feel that the hardback book is far more sturdy than a paper so I could be doing it all wrong but it's so pretty and I have actually made decent progress in that I'm a third of the way through I started it this morning I like to go and get a coffee before I start work when I'm in the office because it just sort of sets me up for the day where I can kind of decompress from the journey in and get myself ready for the sort of social environment of the office which can be quite overwhelming sometimes depending on how many people there are so I read a decent portion while I was there and then I read a little bit at lunch but it's about 400 pages long and the font is quite generous and it's just such a very easy to read book that I'm finding myself just whizzing through it so I'm on chapter 15 already which is page 116 so that's some pretty good progress. I will be reading a little bit more this evening so I'm kind of hoping to get to maybe 150 pages tonight and that means that I will have it finished by Saturday. 
so that when I post this video on Sunday, I will have finished it and I will have full, full views. So this is the second book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, which I believe is a spin-off from Caraval by Stephanie Garber. However, I've not read Caraval. I own the trilogy and I, story of my life, I have meant to read the trilogy, but I haven't yet. So maybe that's a goal for 2023. Goodness. I can't believe it's almost 2023, but that could be my goal for next year to read that trilogy because I am loving this series so far. I'm not 100% sure how many books are in this series. I I hope there are many. I hope there are many, many more because I love this author's writing. So our protagonist, Evangeline Fox, is discovering her own magic and what she can use her power for. And to be honest, she just wants happy endings for for her for everybody she cares about she's just chasing her happily ever after she's married to a prince but things are not going as well as she had planned or at least as well as she had hoped and Jax Jax is my favorite sort of anti-hero he's just some guy that swans in eating an apple causing chaos he is a fate which kind of means that he is <laughs> very chaotic and he has got Evangeline in his debt but he also needs Evangeline to help him and he needs her to help him willingly so we can't force her and I absolutely am loving the dynamic between Evangeline and Jax the way that he always calls her little fox and I don't know I just I feel I'm rooting for the wrong pair here but I am loving their dynamic. And this book involves a curse. I love it. There is a murderous curse that is coming for Evangeline and she needs to break the curse. She needs to do the things she wants to do to help Jax. And that involves them meeting up with old foes, old enemies and trying to work together. And so far I am, I'm absolutely just loving being transported away to uh, the Great North, which is all snowy and icy and just a gorgeous, gorgeous town. Not too different from what Aberdeen is like right now. We are also North and snowy and icy, but alas, as far as I'm aware, there is no magic. That would be really cool if there was. <laughs> this is just a beautiful fairy story. And I'm really enjoying it so far and I'm so excited to see what happens next. And yeah, I'll report back when I have more to say. But for now, I'm exhausted. So I'm going to go take off my makeup and read for a little bit in bed. And yeah, that's me. Talk to you soon. Bye. Friday. It is Friday the 9th of December and I am currently <laughs> three quarters of the way through my current read. So I only have just under 100 pages left of my book and it's currently eight o'clock at night and I am going to read a little bit before I go to bed but first I've got a whole lot of things I want to get done and I know I'm going to read a little bit more tonight and I do want to leave maybe 50 pages or so to read in the morning because I think that would be a really enjoyable start to my Saturday to sort of finish a book that I'm really enjoying but I'm really bad at like savouring a book but I'm trying so hard because I just want to elongate the enjoyment that I'm getting from this book. It is so cold today. It is currently, it is currently two degrees, which fair enough. But with the wind chill, if you add that in, it currently feels like, according to my weather app, it feels like minus four. So today I have mainly spent the day indoors. I did, however, 
go and get myself some new bath bombs because the Christmas bath bombs are out and I really just wanted to get really in the Christmas spirit and I also sort of hoped that the spiced pear soap maybe it wasn't spiced it's definitely a pear soap from Lush I was hoping that would be back because they haven't had it the last few years and I do think that it probably is just now no longer available but my heart wants it so I I went there with the hope that I could get this soap that I don't think exists anymore and I couldn't find it but I got a whole bunch of fun bath bombs and I'm really excited about that because my bones feel so cold from the snow and the ice and I think the only cure for that is the bubbliest of bubble baths. So that is my plan for tonight. I am very, very wild on a Friday night. I'm having a bubble bath and then I'm gonna read my book. <laughs> so like I said, I am now 300 pages into this book, absolutely loving it. And I'm on part two. I've got a funny feeling that I might be close to the end of part two. And of course, I'm not gonna give any spoilers for this book because I don't wanna be the reason that somebody doesn't get to love it. But I am going to say that I am loving, loving finding out more about the characters that I met in the first book. I'm loving finding out more about the fates and about the actual inspiration behind the fairy tales and the relationship between the fates and between the fairy tales and everything is just feeling really linked with each other. And I am just so, so excited to find out what happens next. This book has introduced a whole new bunch of grand houses that love a grand home and some magical areas. And I'm just loving the way that this just feels like a fairy tale. And that is what I want. And I'm just getting the warm and fuzzies. I am loving Jack's and Evangeline's relationship. And I love the way that they hate each other, but they don't hate each other. And yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited to find out what happens next. Now onto some non-bookish things because in my previous video I mentioned I was doing some Christmas crafting and I didn't share what I was doing because I have one friend who watches my videos and she is in my crafting group and I don't want to ruin the surprise should she watch this video. If you are watching this, hi Amanda, I saw you yesterday because this will get posted on Sunday and I will see you on Saturday so that's fun but I can share my crafting now. Yay! So each year, my friends and I were in a little craft group. We all met because we all played roller derby and did some form of crafting. And each year we make Christmas decorations for the group and swap them. And that's why my entire Christmas tree is maybe like 90% handmade decorations. And I love, love our Christmas tree. So my offering this year is not what I wanted it to be. I really wanted it to be a certain thing that I'm hoping it could be. What I wanted to do, to do was knit little um, scarves using cocktail sticks and put them in uh, plastic baubles. But I just couldn't, I couldn't make the physics work to have them be sturdy enough. So I think my boyfriend's gonna have a little look and see if he can do something with his 3D printer for maybe next year or the year after because I still really want to use that idea. I think that'd be so fun, so cute, and such a good way to use up some little teeny ends of yarn. But I didn't make those. I wanted to, but I didn't. What I did make was Starbucks red cups. I mean, not Starbucks at all. They are just my little red cups. So little red cups of hot chocolate. I've got this little, little swirly of like cream. Sure, it's cream. Um. And they've got 22 on them because it's 2022. So that's what I've made. I've got a whole basket of them. Um, one for every person who's joining in. So very excited about those. I'm so excited to see what the other people have made. But I will find out tomorrow and I will share it with you. And we also do a secret Santa. So this year I have got my little secret Santa thing and I have made two items. First up, I made a dice bag with a sort of dragon scale crochet, which is, I am not the best at crafting, but what I am able to do is very simple stitches that give the illusion of talent. So that's why I've made this. 
<laughs> looks far more difficult than it is. My friend that I made it for plays Dungeons and Dragons and it's always good to have a dice bag and inside of it, I'm not going to try and take it out because it took me an age to get it in, is a bath bomb that looks like a lying down dragon and I hope she loves it because it smells amazing. So that's part one. Um, part two is some mittens. Uh, fingerless mittens, they're upside down. <laughs> Little fingerless mittens because my friend really enjoys uh, foraging and also has a little kid. So it's good to sort of have her hands free and but cozy. So that's what I've made and I'm so excited to see how she reacts to them and I hope she loves them. I absolutely love making them. So hopefully I'm off to go and warm up a little bit and then I'm going to return to my book. I'm so excited but I don't want to finish it tonight. I want that to be my Saturday treat because on Saturday I have a very busy day ahead of me. I've got my crafting Christmas celebration. We've got a whole um, smorgasbord of snacks and I plan, I'm planning to make gingerbread cookies in the morning. I wanted to make them after work but our food delivery isn't here yet but it's far too late to be baking gingerbread cookies. So my plan for the morning is finish my book, bake gingerbread cookies, throw makeup on face, go see friends and have an amazing time. And then I will let you know how I got on with my book when I finish it tomorrow because I will finish it tomorrow. my book. Hey! I did not finish it this morning as was intended because I just could not say no. So I finished it last night and oh I absolutely love it. I mean I think I knew perhaps oh 50 pages in that this was going to be a five star read for me and it's it's five stars, hearty handshake and I don't know a, a kidney. I, I loved it. I absolutely just loved everything about this. It is a gorgeous fairy tale, otherworldly, magical story. And I just loved, I loved getting more character growth from the characters that I already knew and loved. I loved getting their backstories. I loved getting flashbacks and visions that sort of, I can put the book down now, um, that sort of explained certain character traits and they just they felt way more rounded and I just grew to love all of the characters I got to know more I was gonna say gossip yeah I got gossip from this world and I just utterly loved it I loved I loved the way that I previously said I loved Evangeline and Jax I do absolutely love their dynamic and they're there were a few moments that I was like, oh, are, they, are they, are they? And it just, oh, I read this whole book just being like, come on, come on. I want you two to get together. And I was just gripped. And I just feel like the author was just keeping me on a hook, I'm willingly, willingly on that hook, just wanting to know what was next for their relationship. And I just, oh, I love the sort of power dynamic that they had as well, because it sort of shifted a little bit in this book. And that was fun. And I loved getting to go to the hollow, which was just this absolutely magical world that I feel is, I have got Legends and Lattes as my Secret Santa gift for my office Secret Santa. I know this because I am my own office Secret Santa because I've organised a secret Santa for my house um, and that secret Santa is literally just me and my boyfriend because we're working from home for, well, I'm four days a week and he's five days at home. So we're having an office secret Santa, I've got myself and I've bought myself legends and lattes. I'm going to act surprised but I feel like the hollow in this book is what I'm expecting the world in legends and lattes to be. So just cozy everything's magical loads of delicious food and it's just 
a cozy warm atmosphere that is what I got from the hollow and I was just so excited to go there find out more about this world love that the journalist the gossipy columnist from the first book was in this book too and you get to see his articles as well I mean he's not a well-respected journalist because he's just you know trading gossip among the sort of well-to-do folks but in fiction I am all here for it I want the gossip of these characters I just I loved the world building got even even better it was already an amazing fully immersive kind of world and I just got more of it and I loved I loved absolutely everything about this world building the storytelling answered so many questions that I had from the first book and then gave me new questions and I I wasn't sure if this was the end of the series and it's not the next book isn't out until September and I don't know how I'm supposed to wait until September to find out what happens next because I would like to know right now I I no I wouldn't like to know I need to know I need to know what happens next I just love loved it I meant I meant to save this book and then I had 100 pages left and my Sainsbury's order was running late so I decided well I'll just read a little bit of my book and then before I knew it I was at the epilogue and <laughs> was raging that the next book doesn't exist yet this book again this is the kind of book which is the reason that I did this reading challenge because I wanted books that just make me just so give me the warm and fuzzies they make me happy in my bones and just bring me joy and this was an absolute joy to read the font is very generous so I, I whizzed through it and I just utterly loved it the story there are more curses in this but we get backstories to the curses and the original fairy stories from the first book get even we get an explanation behind those and kind of find out a little bit about the real people behind those fairy tales and I just felt like I got so many sort of secrets explained to me and so many plot reveals there were twists and turns and I just it's one of those books that I gave up trying to guess what was happening next because I was guessing ridiculous things that were not happening and then these things would come and happen and I'd be like what I didn't I didn't see it coming and when they came ah I was enthralled this book also had more of the characters that we'd already known and a little bit they featured even more so we got more of the vampire lord which I love I was a vampire kid so if you throw a vampire into a book I'm going to be excited. I'm going to very much enjoy that. Lots more of Chaos, lots more of Jax, lots more of Lala and I just, ah, oh, I ate this book up. I loved it so, so much. It is of course a love story but it's kind of a, almost like a cursed love story which is very much in keeping with the entire world that they live in which is full of curses and as well the fairy tales and prophecies but there but the love story that Evangeline has it's just it feels so it's been cursed and she's just out there trying to save her relationship and just oh it so much happens and I just utterly adored this book I want the next one I think I'm gonna have to read Caraval not right now January probably or famous last words I'm just I'm so excited now to read the next book when it comes out in September how am I supposed to wait that long in the meantime I do have Caraval which I believe is the same world and I suppose I can accept having the same world that will have to just keep me going but now I am getting ready to go off to my Christmas crafties I've got my Christmas jumper on and I am I'm actually quite stressed because I slept in so I didn't get up until just after 10 which is ridiculously late for me I'm usually up the weekend at like 8 um but I was tired and then common sense common sense would dictate that I wouldn't make the gingerbread cookies I planned to make I wouldn't curl my hair but I decided to do all of the things I'd planned to do but with two hours less 
and I'm a sweaty, stressy mess. <laughs> and I just found out that I don't even have a box to put my gingerbread cookies in. So I'm gonna have to take gingerbread cookies in a bag? That's, I don't even think I have any sandwich bags. I'm gonna have to wrap them in tin foil. Like, <laughs> like such a tragic offering. I do have other snacks to take, but I plan to make gingerbread and I, I have, I just have absolutely no way to, to take it. Oh, it's all gone wrong. But, oh, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. I'm so excited to see my friends. I haven't seen some of them for, well, I haven't seen some of them since last year's Christmas Crafties. Others I've seen throughout the year. But it's just so hard for everyone to get together. And it's just so lovely. And I absolutely love that my friend who's hosting this year has done my favourite thing when someone organises an event where she's given us an exit time. Perfect. I know when I have to leave is great because sometimes you're at an event and you're like oh, I really kind of I want to go but I don't want to be first to go because that feels like I'm not having a good time and I am I'm just socialed out so it's great I'm so excited but before I go and get ready for my taxi which will be here in about 10 minutes because I'm running far too late it's like a 40 minute walk uphill and it's raining and it's cold I'm just gonna have to fork out for the taxi which don't want to do but I'm gonna to have to. I want to show you my Christmas socks which I know is ridiculous but I have these I'm gonna put these on and the thing I love about these socks is these are 26 years old. I got these when I was 10 and I love them I only wear them at Christmas which is why they've lasted so long and I tend to only maybe wear them once or twice a year and I love them they just make me feel so they're my favorite Christmas socks. I have a second favorite pair they are they're not 26 years old, they're only 25. And I love them so, so much. And this is the perk. My feet haven't grown since I was 11 and I've not grown in height since I was 11 either. So they still fit, which is great. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go and finish getting ready. I'm gonna see if I can find anything to put my gingerbread cookies in. And I'm probably gonna try and avoid spending the entire time with my friends raving about how much I love this book. I might spend a little bit of time doing that. Christmas Crafties was so, so much fun as it always is. It is the social highlight of my entire calendar. I was so excited about going and I ended up having the best time. And I saw friends that I haven't seen in person since pre-COVID. So that was amazing. And it was just so lovely just to sit with my friends, catching up for a good few hours. And we did a quiz. My friend Sai always puts on the best quiz and even though they were really really unwell today they still provided us with an amazing quiz and I came second. Ah, oh, came second. I was so close to winning but my knowledge of current events was pretty dire. I did however absolutely beast the Christmas film portion of the quiz. I got 10 out of 10 for that round because I love Christmas films <laughs> and my Secret Santa recipient absolutely loved her gift so I was so so happy because I was really worried and she really loved it and they fit the gloves fit like gloves so <laughs> objective achieved I'm so happy and I got my gift too which I think is absolutely perfect so I got wrapped up in a gorgeous scarf which I will make use of I have the most gorgeous little piece of artwork which is a Jane Austen cross stitch. I don't know if that's gonna picked up. I do have a light on because it is pitch dark outside. And I think that this is gonna go with my gorgeous, gorgeous Wordsworth classic editions, which I have on display downstairs. I think that this is gonna just look absolutely perfect next to my Jane Austens that are there. And I feel like this totally justifies me getting more Jane Austen books because I can have a display. So thank you so much to my friend Wendy. I absolutely love this. In addition to the Secret Santa swap, we did a decoration swap and I'm so excited about putting those on my tree and I don't have space for them but I'm gonna make space. So I've had the absolute most amazing day. Uh, my heart is very full and my tummy is very full because we had far too many snacks. 
We were supposed to order dinner. There was no space for dinner. We were so full of snacks. And I just had the best time. So this vlog is an absolute success. I read a book that I absolutely loved and I had lots of little bits of self-care and I had an amazing time with my friends. And now I'm gonna go and eat my dinner with my boyfriend downstairs and have a nice cozy night in because it's raining and word on the street is that it's meant to get to minus four tonight in Aberdeen. So I'm gonna stay inside and be nice and cozy. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.